never but I want to see him look upon his face singing down to sing forever of his saving grace of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice singing cares all past home at last ever to rejoice when in valley lows I look toward the mountain high and behold my Savior there leading in the fight with a tender hand I spread toward the valley low guiding me I can see as I onward go and don't you know oh I want to see him look upon his face singing there to sing forever of his saving grace of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice singing he has a past home at last ever to rejoice when before me bellows rise from the mighty deep then my Lord directs my bark, he do save me key, and he leads me gently on through this world below. He's a real friend to me, oh, I love him so, and don't you know, oh, I want to see him look upon his face, singing he there to sing. Ever of his saving grace, of his saving grace on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice, singing, cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Amen. amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Let us go to our Heavenly Father and pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we come before you, before your great throne of grace and mercy. We come saying thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and touching us with the finger of love and allowing us to see the dawning of a new day. We pray that none of us here today will take this day for granted, that we will allow our lives and our actions today to glorify you, and that we might once again worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray for those listening out in the audience of Facebook and other mechanisms online. We pray that something might be said this morning that might edify their soul, and that if there's any errant soul there that do not know your dear son, Jesus Christ, and the pardon of their sins, we pray that they might find a faithful member of the church that might bring them to the manservant so they can be baptized for the remission of their sins. We pray as we go forward in this worship service that all things will give you the glory and the honor. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let us all say, Amen. 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 This morning I come before you to talk to you on the subject of, are you ignorant of the devices of Satan? Are you ignorant of the devices of Satan? You might say, well, what are the devices of Satan? Satan has many, many, many devices he uses false prophets, he uses false teachers, he uses dissension, he uses division, he uses hatred, he uses confusion, he uses racism, he uses all types of devices. He even has disciples of death and foolish followers of false teachers. And if you remember, those of us who are old enough, he even used Jim Jones, who took, what? almost a thousand people down into the jungles yeah. of Guyana, South America, and they committed suicide following Jim Jones. So if there was ever 
a time in which the devil, a.k.a. Satan, has deceived the world, that time is now. We have death, we have disease, we have this death and disease all over the land. Poverty is pervasive in the world. Even in America, the richest nation on the face of this earth, we still find many people living way below the line of poverty. Racism is still rampant in our land. In this country, America, we still can't get past the scars that were left on our country from slavery. America is divided. America is divided by race. America is divided by color. America is divided by social class. America divided by wealth. Divided by politics. Divided by unjust laws that oppress an already oppressed group of people. So there's so much division in our country. So we're now standing in need of something. And we need someone to stand in the gap. And that someone is each and every one of us. And you have to say, well, who is the us I'm talking about? I'm talking about every baptized, repentant believer in Jesus Christ. And we must what? Come together. Come together. I say this because we have so many things in this country that have divided us. And now, us being the body of Christ, we sometimes are divided. So you might say, well, what's all behind this division? What's causing all this confusion? Why is there so much hatred? And why is there so much murder? Why is there so much crime? And why are all these things happening in our country? Why can't we just get along? I'm talking about whites and blacks and other races of people living in complete harmony. Why can't we have that? Well, there is an evil force living Amen. among us. Amen. An evil force at work in our land. Some of us have no knowledge of this supernatural force. We do not realize that he has power. He has the power to do what? To kill, to steal, and to destroy. And you might say, well, who is this someone? This is someone who knows God. He knows God personally. He has conversations with God. We're talking about the devil, of course. Remember, he spoke to God when they were discussing the disposition of who? Job. So Satan, the devil, has personal knowledge of who God is. And if you remember, get the scripture for me, brother. Go, take your time to get there. Turn to Luke chapter 10 and verse number 18. Luke chapter 10 and verse number 18. Remember, Satan, the devil, was once up there with God. But that was not enough for that old Satan. He wanted to unsert authority. And Jesus witnessed something in Luke Chapter 10, verse 18. What did Jesus see, Brother Jenkins? And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Verse 18 again. Verse 18 again, brother. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Okay, thank you, my brother. So we must come together, and I say this, because in this country, we have far too many things doing what? 
tearing us apart. So, as we go forward in this lesson, we're going to do some Bible thumping this morning. Uh, my brother, if you don't mind, get for me the scripture right here. We're going to read a little bit. Turn to Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. And we're going to look at how Satan operates. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 1, here the Bible reads. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Amen. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day ye shall eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Read verse 6. Verse number 6 of the same chapter. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Amen. So one of the ways in which the devil uses his devices is what? Tampering with scripture. Amen. Changing and rearranging the word of God. Notice verse number four. And it says, and the serpent, notice this, in the form of a serpent the devil speaks, said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Was that true, brothers and sisters in Christ? No. No. What did God say? God said in verse number three, the woman said unto the serpent, we may me eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So you have the Satan lying on God. Notice what he says in verse number five, for God does know that in the day, this is a lie from Satan, that ye shall eat thereof. Then your eyes will be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Instead of holding firm to the word of God, notice what the woman did. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And then there's consequences. Once we Disobey God. Notice verse number seven. If you don't mind, Brother Roger, pick up from verse number seven. And the eyes of them, Genesis chapter three, verse number seven. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Verse eight. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Keep reading. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I 
hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Read that question again. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Continue reading. Hast thou eaten of the tree? Wherefore I command thee that thou shouldest not eat. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, the woman that thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Okay, stop right there. Here we have the Lord. We have God questioning Adam and Eve for the transgression that they are guilty of. And what happened in verse 13, brother? And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And what happened in 14? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, <coughs> Excuse me, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon the belly shall thy go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now I'm going to pick up from verse number 16, and we're going to tie this into the lesson. Unto the woman, we're talking the consequences of sin. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Ladies, you can relate to that. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children, and desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over you. And notice what he said to the man. Man, listen to this. And to Adam, he said, because thou hast done what, Roger? Hearken unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In okay, keep going. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Keep going. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, Thou shalt return unto the ground, for out of it, uh, oh, excuse me, for out of it wasn't thou taken. For dust art thou, thou art, and upon dust thou shalt return. So we see the consequences of their sin. He multiplied the pains and the agony of childbirth as a poor, as a result of what the woman did, and of the man he was cursed. That he shall till the ground all the days of his life and live by the sweat of his brow. Now, Roger, take your time. Turn back to 2 Corinthians. This time you're going to go to verse number 4 and 5, but you're in chapter 10. Get to chapter 10, but concentrate on verses 4 and verses number 5. So go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and start reading in verse 4 and 5. Verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 mm -hmm. verse 4. For the weapons of war are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of the stronghold mm -hmm. casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to be obedient of Christ. My question this morning is this. Does the devil have a stronghold on this country? Oh, yeah. Are more people yeah. listening to the devil or reading the word of God? The devil. There are consequences yeah. Yeah. to our sin. Now go over to chapter 11 and read verse number 3. Same book, chapter 11. Verse number three, what does the Bible say? But I fear lest by any means, 
as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. Is there simplicity in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Yes. Did the serpent beguile Eve? Did he uh, hearken to the voice of his wife rather than listening to God? The answer is yes. yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, the answer is yes. As we delve a little deeper into this lesson, we're going over to Romans chapter 8 and verse number 7. And I will commence reading. In Romans chapter 8 and verse number 7, notice this. How does the devil beguile us? He beguiles us by us listening to our carnal mind. Notice what Romans chapter 8 verse 7 says, because the carnal mind, notice that, is what? Enmity against who? God. God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither what? He can be. But then he explains it. But ye, talking to the Christian, are not of what? Flesh. Keep going. But in the spirit. That's a large S, me yeah. God. Exactly. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And notice verse number 10. And if Christ, we can say the devil, but if Christ be in you, the body is what? Dead because of sin. sin. But the spirit, spirit is life because of, of righteousness. righteousness. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we can't be righteous unless we allow the spirit of God to live in our mortal bodies. Let me say that again. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we cannot be righteous unless we allow, notice that, allow the Spirit of God to dwell in yes. our mortal bodies. Amen. And then you might say, well, why is all this happening? We read it before. We're going to Revelation chapter 12, starting at verse number 7. In Revelation chapter 12, in verse number 7, you talk about the war. We talk about what happened in heaven. We talk about the occurrence. We talk about how serious this situation was. In Revelation chapter 12, verse number 7, the Bible reads, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And, and the dragon, dragon fought against his angels. And prevail. Hold on, a prevail. Slow down for a second. Read verse 7 again, very slow. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, which is Satan. Mm -hmm. And the dragon fought against his angel. Verse 8. And prevailed not. Mm -hmm. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Keep going. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil Keep going. and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let that scripture permeate your mind. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither notice that when you fight against God what happened neither was there what any place wow. found anymore in heaven and the great dragon we're talking about the devil was cast out that old serpent what was he in the garden of Eden serpent that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth. His angels was cast out with him. Now notice what happened in verse 10. 
and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now, now has come salvation. Keep going, keep going, brother. And, script, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren. Say that again. The, the, the what of our brother? The accuser of our brethren. The what of our brother? The accuser of our of our brethren mm -hmm. is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Read verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and their love, not their lives, until the death. And they overcame him by yeah. the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, they love not their lives unto death. But brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a dilemma. You know what that dilemma is? Verse number 12. Notice what the Bible says. Therefore, rejoice. rejoice. Keep going. Ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, woe to them, excuse me, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have not, but he have but a short time. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea! For where is the devil? The devil has come down right here, Man. having great wrath, because he know he have, but a short time. So if you wonder why things are happening the way that they are, it's because of the wrath of Satan. He's trying to take as many people as possible with him in the day of judgment. Amen. And brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're honest with yourself, you would have to be completely transparent and honest and say this, that the vast majority of people are lost. The vast majority Amen. of people don't know God. Amen. The vast majority of people are caught up in religious fakery. The vast majority of people don't know the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And here's another sad Amen. irony. The vast majority of Christians don't do enough to please our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Question. Did Jesus bear the cross alone? Did Jesus bear the cross alone? And another question, where were the disciples when Jesus was on the cross? Most of them had fled. And you know, I want to encourage you for a moment. I really want to encourage you. Go to Acts chapter 1. Brother Roger, and we're going to get ready to close, but we're going to close in Acts. Go to Acts chapter 1, Brother Roger. In verse number 1, start reading. The former trustees have I made, O Theopolis, mm -hmm. of all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after that, he through the Holy Ghost have given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Uh -huh. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Read verse 4 and 5 and 6. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which he have. Ye have heard of me. For John the ba John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And you know, after that Holy Ghost came down upon the disciples, and right before Peter got up to preach the first gospel sermon, you have 
all these people. And you notice what it says in chapter 2, verse 5. It says, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was what? Noised abroad, the multitude, so it was a large and company of people, came together and were confounded because they heard every man speak in his own language. And they were what? All amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, aren't all these men that speak Galilean? And how hear we every man in our own tongue? Jesus prophesied when he told Peter, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build what? My church. And notice the conditions and the gates of what? Hell, Hell shall not, not prevail against, against it. it. Did he say the gates of hell shall not prevail against them? It. Did he say the gates of hell will not prevail against the Baptist church? It. Did he say that the gates of hell will not prevail against T.D. Jackson's church? It. And he said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build what? My church. The church of Christ. So we know that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, died for the church that wears his name. We know that. We know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is plain and true. And we also know that the responsibility of caring for that gospel rests on whose shoulders? The Christian. We can't allow the denominational world to taint the hearts of Men and women with false doctrine and say nothing. We must proclaim that unadulterated word of God to a lost and sin-sick world. Amen. It's up to us. So in verse 14, Peter made it plain. Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and called unto him. Go ahead, brother. Verse number 14 in chapter 2. Check your time. And Peter. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, mm -hmm. lifted up his voice mm -hmm. and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. Keep going. But these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But that but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, mm -hmm. and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Keep going. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, Blood and fire and water, I mean, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, but the great and noble day of the Lord come. Okay, go down to verse number 31. Verse number 31 of chapter 2. What does the Bible say? And the Bible says, he seen this before spent of the resurrection of Christ, uh -huh. that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Keep going. This Jesus have God have God raised up. Wherefore we are all our witnesses. Therefore, be by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. He have shed forth this, which we yet ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into heaven, but he said unto he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thy foes thy footstool. Keep going. Therefore, 
Let all the house of Israel know surely that God have made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. And what happened after that? And when the crowd heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Okay, keep going. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Every? Every one of you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you know what? What happened after that occurrence, uh, Brother Roger? Finish out the chapter. For the promises unto you and your children, and to all that are for all, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Keep going. And with many other words. Did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So we are going to be aware of the devices of Satan. We must stay within the word of God. We must know the word of God. We must follow the Holy Bible. We must pray. We must watch and pray. We must be vigilant of the devil because we know the devil, like a roaring lion, seeks whom he may devour. So finally, the devil attacks the church with false doctrine taught by false teachers. I'm going to close this out by going to 2 Peter 2 verses 1 through 3. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, here the Bible reads, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, talking about the church, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord, that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason, by the way of truth, shall evil be spoken of. But through covetousness, and they with, with framed words shall make what? Merchandise of you. Whose judgment, notice that, whose judgment now of a long time lingered not, and their damnation slumbered not. And notice how God feels about this. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down from heaven, cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved on to judgment. And he's even more serious as what he was in the day of Noah. And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the blood upon the world of ungodly. Finally, look what he did to Solomon and Gomorrah, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. My prayer this morning is that none of us will be ignorant of the, the vices of Satan, that we will be aware of what the devil is doing in this world that we will be aware of what the devil has done in this country, and we will also be cautious and vigilant of what the devil can do in our lives if we let our guard down. If there's any listening or any in our midst that do not know the Lord and the pardon of their sins, there's a plain and simple plan of salvation. You must first hear the word of God. You heard 
the word of God this morning, you must believe that word. Jesus came down to this mundane earth, lived a century life, went to the cross of Calvary, died for the sins of the whole world to bring us nigh to God, to give, give us a chance to salvation. You must believe that. So hearing, believing, and you must repent of all your past and present sins. You must confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You notice I keep saying must. There are conditions for our salvation. And you must be baptized. Plunge in that watery grave of baptism. Buried in Christ, rising up to live in the newness of life. Baptized to put you into the church. Baptized to make your life right with God. Baptized to give you a seal of your salvation. Baptized to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Baptized to wash away each and every one of your sins. So come hearing, come believing, come repenting, come confessing, come being baptized. And after you've been baptized, we ask that you live faithful. As it says in Revelation 2.10, be faithful, be faithful, be faithful, be faithful unto death. If you're a Christian and you need prayer or you need to confess or you need to repent of any sin in your life, please let your desires be made known as we stand and sing the song of invitation. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, my Jesus cried on the cross. Well, I know it was the blood for me. Amen. I, I like to say that a lot of times when we want to know why so much, so much 